same as the constant. So this gives us minus 2ny bar. Okay, That's just a constant term. Uh, in this situation here, when we differentiate the c squared, it gives us 2c. n times the 2c gives us plus 2nc. Okay. And when we differentiate this here, we get, well, the derivative of c is just 1 times the constant is 2nx bar m. So this gives us plus 2nx bar m. And the derivative of this, this is just a constant, this becomes 0. Okay. So our two partial derivatives, okay, okay, our two partial derivatives, the partial, the partial derivatives, okay, our partial derivatives are delta s of e of the line with respect to m is equal to minus 2n x y bar plus 2n x bar c plus 2n x squared bar m okay and this needs to be set equal to zero so setting this equal to zero we end up with okay let's keep the what the unknowns let's keep the m and the c on one side okay so this becomes well it becomes this is being set equal to zero so let delta se of the line dm equal zero so well then what we have is we have minus 2n x y bar plus 2n x bar c plus 2n x squared bar m must be equal to zero okay uh, you can see we have a constant term here across each term we have a minus we have a 2n okay right across let's divide across by 2n so this becomes minus x y bar plus x bar c plus x squared bar m is equal to zero or rewriting this we end up with that this is m x squared bar plus c x bar is equal to minus x y bar okay let's get into the form of our equation of the line which is uh, let's say mx plus c oh sorry ignore that it's mx plus c must be equal to must be equal to y okay and so when we do that this becomes let's divide across by x bar so this becomes m times x squared bar divided by x bar plus c must be equal to or say that became a plus when it came across must be equal to x y bar divided by x bar okay so this looks like this okay where a point on the line is x squared bar y bar and the y value when we substitute that in here what we get back is we get an x y bar divided by an x bar okay that's our first uh, part of this system the second part is when we set the partial derivative of the line with respect to c the, the intercept when we set that equal to zero well this partial derivative is minus 2ny bar plus 2nc plus 2nx bar m so we have to let that delta of s of e of the line okay of c equals zero okay and uh, so when we set this equal to zero we end up with minus 2ny bar plus 2nc plus 2nx bar m equals zero dividing across by the 2n this gives us minus y bar plus c plus x bar m is equal to zero uh, putting in this form here this becomes uh, m x bar plus c must be equal to y bar okay so now we have two lines that have i suppose we've minimized them okay but we have two lines and what we know is this so let's just write down our two lines our first line okay, let's say one and two and what we'd like to do is we'd like to solve for m and c okay once we've solved for m and c we have we have a form or we have a, an expression uh, that allows us to calculate the slope and allows us to calculate the intercept given a set of values given a set of n observations so let's redo this so our two lines our first let me just call our first line the first line is mx bar plus c is equal to y bar 
and our second line is uh, is equal to m. It's x squared bar divided by x bar. Okay, it's that term here plus c is equal to an x y bar divided by an x bar. That's our second line. Okay. So what we know is with respect to this line, a point on this line. So a point on this line here must be x bar y bar okay and a point on this line here okay, must be well this point here it's x squared bar over y bar sorry over x bar and the y component is x y bar over over x bar that's our second point on the line okay. and I suppose what's interesting here is that this regression line after we've gone through the partial derivatives and minimizing it, okay, uh, the regression line, the best fit regression line, that the average of the independent variable and the average of the y variable is a point on the line. Okay. So now that we have two points on the line, we can calculate the slope. So don't forget, uh, recall, recall that the slope uh, given two points let's call them uh, x1 y1 and x2 y2 it is uh, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so let's say that this is our first point here okay and let's say that this is or let's say this is our second point and this is our first point uh, doesn't matter which way we do it okay or we could say that this is our second point and that this is our first point and um, either way we will be able to we'll be able to define this okay so let's say that this is our first point and that this is our second point okay so this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 so our slope m uh, is going to be y2 which is uh, x y bar divided by x bar minus y1 which is y bar okay and that needs to be divided by x2 which is x squared bar over x bar minus x1 which is which is x bar okay doesn't look very pretty uh, but let's multiply the top part by the fraction x bar over 1 okay and let's multiply the bottom part by the fraction also x bar over over one, let's say over a, it's it, which is effectively one, which doesn't change it. Okay, so what does this now become? Okay, so this is going to be x bar times this term here gives us an x y bar, and it's going to be minus x bar times y bar, x bar times y bar, and that's to be divided by x bar times this term here. The denominator cancels, so this gives us an x squared bar minus uh, x times x bar gives us an x bar squared okay which is the form of the slope uh, that we're that we're interested in so this form here okay uh, this form okay uh, is based okay, off averages okay or or means means okay of our independent and dependent dependent variables okay so this is a good form to have okay uh, so uh, guys uh, once we have the slope uh, we can actually calculate what the y-intercept is okay well the y-intercept uh, we know that our equation of our line is y is equal to mx actually let's go back here uh, you can actually see in this particular form here okay, that we could calculate what the what the y-intercept is. The y-intercept is our c. So from so from one above, we have that mx bar plus c is equal to y bar. Uh, solving for c, this gives us c is equal to y bar minus mx bar. Okay, as required. So we can calculate our slope by using this particular form. 
which is this, we calculate the average of the x's, the average of the y's, the average of the x squareds, and the average of the x y's. Okay, and once we have our slope, we can also then move ahead and we can calculate our our y intercept, which is uh, the y intercept is equal to the average of the y's minus the slope, which we've we've gone and have calculated, times the average the average of the x's. Okay. Uh, so guys, uh, once again, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, I know this was quite a long video, uh, but I hope that this was uh, in some way helpful with respect to trying to understand uh, where these formulas that look quite complicated come from uh, that are associated with this regression line of best fit. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this particular form of our expression. Uh, I'm going to transform it into sigma notation. Okay, uh, And then in another video, we're going to actually calculate the correlation coefficient, which is uh, how to derive a formula that, we're, that, we're, that, that, that represents the correlation uh, using sigma notation also. Okay, guys, uh, once again, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope this video was somewhat helpful, although uh, it was very long. Okay, bye-bye.